Hey everybody, welcome to my Calculating Snow Loads tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to calculate the snow load for any given building, um, especially for commercial structures. Uh, one of the few things that you need to know before jumping in here are these different resources that you'll be navigating, navigating to throughout the document. I recommend opening these up and saving them into your CEA Google Drive folder because you're gonna be using them a bit later on. So the first thing that we're going to be looking at is a snow load formula. So it looks really intimidating, but a few of the, thing, few of the things that you need to know is that a lot of this information is actually already given to you. So what we wanna focus on is actually calculating our importance factor and our ground snow load. Uh, the rest of the information, our roof slope factor, our exposure factor, and our thermal factor is going to be given information based on the building that we're working with. We'll talk more about this a little bit later on. So as we're looking at calculating snow loads, for the practice problem, you're going to be calculating the snow load for a roof of a high school in a suburb of Chicago, Illinois, that has an approximate enrollment of about 2,500 people. Sound familiar? And for this structure, we're going to be using the following coefficients. So for CE, our exposure factor, we're using 1.0. And assuming that this is an urban or suburban area that's surrounded by other buildings and it's going to be partially exposed to wind. Our thermal factor, CT, is assuming that the building is heated and it's going to lose some heat through the roof. CS, our slope factor, is going to be 1.0 because the roof is low slope. Depending on the pitch of the roof, this factor could increase or decrease. So as you can see here, I have all of my different values already set up. And I'm going to, going to go ahead and add in one other row to make sure that we don't forget to multiply this all by 0 0.7. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to figure out what my importance factor is. So depending on how many people are going to be using this building, it's going to be greater or less than um, based on the occupancy. So for example, the occupancy or the importance factor of a sports arena might be much higher than the importance factor of a school because there's going to be more people there. So what we want to do for the importance factor is we're going to scroll up here. And the first thing we want to do is look at the occupancy category table. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this link. And this is going to bring me to the section of the International Building Code or the IBC, that big book that we looked at in class. And I'm gonna look at all my different occupancy categories here and try to find the nature of the occupancy that is most similar to what I'm looking for in the problem. So in this case, I'm looking for buildings and other structures containing an elementary school, secondary school, or daycare that has an occupant load greater than 250. So based on this, I know that my occupancy category is three. So I'm going to take this information and check it against the importance factor table, which can also be found in the International Building Code. So based on this table, I see that my occupancy category is 3, and my importance factor for this problem is 1.1. So what I can do is I can go back to my practice problem. I'm going to type in 1.1, and now I'm ready to go ahead and find my ground snow load. So for my ground snow load, this is a, also a reference that's within the IBC, and you can find a link here. And this is based on how much snow different areas and different regions across the United States are getting. So I know that my area of interest is a suburban high school in Chicago. So I'm going to be looking at this region right around here, um, right by Lake Michigan, which we're very familiar with. And if you look at these lines that are going throughout the map, what I'm looking for is the amount of snow in PSF that this particular region is getting. So if I look in between the lines, I'll see that this region is 25 PSF. If you go northern, uh, more further north in the map, you'll see that areas in Minnesota are at 70 PSF, and then areas that are down, down here near Florida and Louisiana they're not getting any snow, and this makes sense. So if we're looking at Chicago, my PG that I'm going to plug back into my formula is 25. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and put in 25 here. So now I'm ready to multiply all of these things together. So I'll go ahead and pull out my calculator. And we already know that we don't really need to include 1.0. Um, it's just going to give us a 1. So let's go ahead and multiply 0 0.7 times 1.1 times 25. And that's going to give me a PS of 19.25. So unfortunately, we're not quite done yet. Uh, we have to make sure that we are checking our minimums. So if our PG is less than 20 PSF, then we have to do this additional step of multiplying our importance factor by our ground snow load. In this case, my PG is not less than 20, it's 25. So I can move on to this next minimum. And before I move on to this next minimum, it's really important that we do this step because as structural engineers, we wanna make sure that we're designing for the worst case scenario. So in the event that an area actually gets more snow than is anticipated, we want to make sure that we're designing a structural support system that can actually carry that additional weight. So this step is really important. So since our ground snow load or our PG is greater than 20 PSF, then we have to take this additional step of multiplying our importance factor 1.1 times 20 PSF. So that's going to give us a PS or a new design load. Um, that has to be greater than or equal to 22 PSF. So if we look at our current answer here, our PS is currently 19.25 PSF. 19.25 is not greater than or equal to 22 PSF. So what that means for us is that our snow load that we have to use in the design of this high school is 22 PSF. So just by checking this minimum, it made sure that the design of our uh, roof and our school structure um, is going to be designed for the worst case scenario. And taking this extra precaution could save many lives. Um, if you have any questions on this, do not hesitate to email me. But in this next part, you're going to be moving on to the next practice problem in this same document and doing this by yourself. Um, and you will submit it for review when you are done. So good luck and have fun.